Welcome to the podcast where we track down Australian war veterans, have a chat with them and hear their stories. I'm Alex Lloyd and this is Life on the Line. They were building positions in there if for a fight. happened to us, by the time anyone got to us, oh, I think it was the chaos. weather was so bad, there would be nobody left. Boots full of blood. And the next thing I hear was alarms screaming. The chances of survival were very, very slick. The soldiers didn't want to go into the ambushes, so they'd send the kids in first. So he was sent in first into an ambush and he got shot in the stomach. It was very hard for me, very hard for my family. And the pain was Proud of the pain. crew. Out of what I've achieved and what I'm doing. To volunteer for service was in effect to put your life on the line. Bram Connolly is a former Special Forces officer. He's now a published author, founder at Warrior U, podcaster at the Warrior U podcast, and a mentor. I spoke with Bram not about his time in Special Forces, but about his pursuits in life after service and all things human optimization. I'm Alex Lloyd, joined on Skype today by Bram Connolly. Bram, welcome to Life on the Line. Thanks, Alex. How are you? Not bad, mate. Yourself? Good. I'm just trying to learn from your introductions just to make my podcast a little bit more polished. So it's good to watch the master at work. You're very kind, mate. Well, we will get you back on this podcast, Bram, to chat about your experiences in uniform. But we do need a little context before we dive into today's topic. Can you briefly summarize your military career for our listeners? Briefly? Yeah, I spent nearly 21 years in the in the military, 15 of that in special forces. And I was fortunate enough to be on the first of a lot of things. I was on the first modern commando selection reinforcement cycle in 1997. I was then fortunate enough to be on the very first of the tactical assault group training for what was for our commando at the time. And I was the first uh, Sierra 1-1 in the tactical assault group uh, that wasn't from Special Air Service Regiment. And then I commissioned from sergeant to be an officer and, and then spent seven of that 15 years as an officer in the Special Operations Command. I was a platoon commander in Afghanistan. It's a Yankee Alpha, which uh, <laughs> we can talk about in more detail a bit later. That's a rough summary. And when did you discharge? So I joined in 1991, discharged, started 2012. It's interesting that you've had both those facets of leadership, being an NCO and then transitioning, ascending, however you want to put it, to the officer ranks. We'll come back to it in a moment when we get to the topic of leadership, but that's why I wanted that background. You've had quite a multifaceted career, as you say, of firsts, but also, I don't know if technically unique, but a rare experience in how you've gone from one level to the other. Yeah, I've had some really interesting, really interesting experiences, to be fair. And, you know, going from sergeant to captain as well, it was funny because, you know, uh, you're accepted when you're in those ranks, those specific ranks, when you've gone through them organically. But when you change over like I do, you suddenly have, you know, all the sergeants look at you and they say, oh, you know, he's an officer now. And all the officers look at you like, oh, you know, he's just an ex-sergeant. So you actually have uh, no friends in none of the camps and, and you're on your own. So I learned, I learned to get, I learned to have thick skin pretty quick. Well, let's talk about Warrior U, the Performance Edge. It's a program you founded, I believe. How did it start and what's it all about? Warrior U... I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, Steve McCaig, actually, sitting down talking one day over lunch about um, performance and how people always, you know, talk about wanting to join the military. And and we both had a bit of a laugh about how at every barbecue we ever go to, we end up, you know, telling kids how to get in the military. And and then I thought back to my sort of life and realised that I had mentors that helped me to get into the ADF. And then I had mentors when I went for commandos. And then I had mentors when you know, when I changed over to be an officer. And so I realized that there's something to that. And I thought that what I would do is set up a, a framework so that what we do at parties and barbecues and family gatherings, we could do in a more structured way. So Warrior U has been set up to, you know, help people who want to join the ADF and uh, provide them with mentors, training, some cultural immersion lessons, and some technical lessons. And initially, it was a subscription service of $50 a month. And then I just felt like, and that money was going back to pay off the website. And I just felt like that was just too much and out of the average person's reach. So as it's become more profitable, and as I've been able to put the money back into the business, we've paid those people back that initially paid that $50 a month. And we changed it to a subscription of a one-off payment of $99. So it's completely disrupted that whole that whole side of, of a market where people are trying to do this. And what are the services that you offer? Primarily what we have is 
there's a training program that's set up specifically for people to join uh, the ADF and, and that entry level testing. When they join up and pay the subscription, they're then they're able to do the foundation week and we can work out what their training level is and then adjust that training program to suit. So it's a very specific training program. And there's also a whole raft of lessons from you know, basic field craft, the ranks of the ADF, you know, a little bit of stuff around different radios and weapons and vehicles and things like that. And and the cultural aspects too. There's a little bit of resilience and a little bit of mental toughness stuff thrown in there as well, but not too much. And then there's the forums which allow everyone to, you know, have a bit of a talk and talk about their experiences through their use sessions and Kapuka and Singleton or other initial employment training. Obviously, the things like the radios and the weapons are quite specific to those with that military career in mind. Do you find people, anyone signing up for general resilience or getting that fitness program correct or basically a goal that's not necessarily military, but they want to work on themselves and work on their own lives? Yeah. Yeah, it's killing me. Uh, It's killing me because I've got this multifaceted business that I'm not able to branch out. We talk a lot about optimization and resilience and mental toughness and stuff like that. And yeah, I've got I've got you know some people in business and a few I mentor a few people you know here and there and around the track. And there's a couple of athletes as well who who sort of reach out who don't really have any desire to join the ADF so to speak, but they'd like to be able to have the mental framework for which to operate in and, and how to train in. And the leadership aspect to it is a real is a real big selling point. But you know I understand the niche that I'm in with Warrior U. And so at the moment, it's sort of sitting right in that niche, although there is, there is a, another project I'm working on, which is called Version 2, which is more about you know, helping an individual be a better version of themselves. And that way you can more neatly differentiate this is the program to gear you up for soldiering and this is a more holistic self-improvement cycle you can enter. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and I think that there's a, you know, I don't want to shut down worry you although it's not a profitable business it just is a it just is a mentoring and supporting business i don't want to have to shut that down because it it has helped and it is helping so many people but my real passion is on you know human optimization and if you've listened to the worry you podcast you'll know that you know every now and again or most often than not we sort of go down that path of interviewing people more about you know how to make ourselves better better as individuals than what we do about how to get into the adf The most recent podcast I listened to by you guys, I think it was last week's on cognitive resilience. And although you could apply that chat to the military and you often do bring your own experience into it, what was interesting was some of the lessons being discussed there with your guest were just as applicable to -to day-to-day life for a civilian as well. Resilience, leadership, self-optimization, they're universal skills. Yeah. And I guess the premise for the podcast is a little bit different than the premise for the website because the podcast is myself looking at myself from an, an elite background. I certainly wouldn't classify myself as elite anymore, but what I'm trying to do is seek out people who have elite aspects to their lives. You know, so someone like Liz Nutterbart is a, you know, she's a senior professor or senior academic, sorry, in um, in cognitive research. And so it's a really interesting, you know, aspect to understanding what it is that makes us emotionally driven. You know, and then I'm, I've, I'm talking to Leroy Four next week, who's a guy, the Fit Dad Lifestyle, and he talks about how, you know, dads can can achieve excellence by just wanting to achieve excellence and then applying, you know, his framework over the top of it with your kids, you know. And then there's another guy, this Alex Lloyd guy who I want to talk to who's a third Dan Black Belt, you know, and then I'm sure he's got some elite aspects to his life that we could all draw on. So the Warrior You podcast is probably already branching down into that version too. And I think that over time, if I get enough people on Patreon, you know, to support it financially, then we'll be able to do it full time. It's really interesting that, Australia is so far behind in podcasting compared to the US. I've noticed podcasts in the US, 50, 60, 70, 100,000 US a month they're receiving from their patrons in donations to keep that podcast going, you know. I certainly don't want to get rich off of it, but I'd like to make enough money to do something creative that I love doing. I think we're a bit stingy as a culture. But no, I noticed you've launched the Patreon to support the podcast, which I, running my own podcast, I totally understand that impulse to do so. Before we get onto specific topics in regards to Warrior U, I just want to look at the team you're working with as well, because you're the driving force behind that program and that podcast. But one of the quotes on your website is, it takes a village to raise a child, it takes warriors to raise a warrior. Who are some of the other warriors you're teaming up with? 
Oh, well, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, there's so many guys and girls that are offering their support. Some of them have said to me that they don't want to be named. They just want to be able to reach out to the, the mentees, which is, I get that because some of them are still in the ADF. And then there's, you know, there's Reese Dewar, OAM, who's one of my best friends and he has his own business uh, and he, he donates a lot of his time into helping the uh, mentees. You guys did a fantastic podcast the other week, you and Reese. Yeah, the sound wasn't great. We've learned a few lessons from that and we're going to we're gonna get together and, and do a whole heap of different podcasts based on the same sort of format. Yeah, and specifically we want to sit down and have like around the campfire chats about life and special forces and, you know, how to go through it. There's no one really doing what, what I'm trying to do in Australia. They're doing it in America, but uh, we, we, we sort of look at the way they do it over there and and we've got a, we've got some connections now to the US SF and and the UK SF for those guys and girls to come on the podcast, which is great. There's mentors actually from the police force as well, from some of the tactical units and from the Navy clearance divers and also the Air Force and all of those. The ones that want to be known, their um, their profiles are on the Warrior U uh, mentor page. I think if you're innovative and have a good clear idea in the Australian podcasting scene, you can forge your own way quite well because it is quite small and niche out here. And what you're doing, I think, in Australia is unique. And what if we look at America, though, our genres, you can find plenty of others, but let's actually yeah, do something relevant to our fellow Aussies down here because that's going to be more immediate practical advice. And I mean, for what I'm doing, that's just getting stories they can relate to more readily because uh, guys from outback Australia or from their local city or something that's gone on to do amazing things. In your specific case, you can mentor people in real time. Let's talk about some of the mentorship you have to go through. Uh, You're not just offering it through the program. Your Instagram DMs are quite a maze, I believe. Oh, my. I have spent, I mean, this is why I ended up building Warrior U, because after I wrote the first book, The Fighting Season, which is, you know, which follows an SF platoon commander, funnily enough, through Afghanistan 2010. Are you an authority on that subject? <laughs> well, I was Yankee Alpha. I'm not Matt Ricks, though. It was very cathartic to write it. It's based on a lot of my own experiences from the combat perspective, but the story is obviously make-believe. And for those that want to keep trying to tell me that they know who the CO is in the book, you know, you'd have to read the book if you don't know what I'm talking about. Well, it's a fictitious character in my head, so I'm, I'm sorry if anyone's drawing any parallels between anyone else they know. It's just not true. But, yeah, look, I think that... The, the whole book coming out and Alan and Unwin didn't do a bad job of promoting it. And I did a lot of my own promotion on Facebook. And then all of a sudden I was receiving three, four, 500 DMs a week about joining the military and joining special forces. And, you know, some weeks I'd get 10, some weeks I'd get 500. Yeah. And so I was trying to answer them all. And in the end, it was just taking up all of my time. So now I, I try not to answer too many of them if I can help it, because it just, it takes me away from my family. So what I, what I set up is a closed Facebook group on the Warrior U page. And, you know, people can subscribe to that for four ninety five. I think it is a month. And the reason again, that we monetize it is because it did end up becoming a full-time job at one point. And so the money from the Facebook group for one hour a week, we'll sit there and do a Facebook live with the members. The money from that goes into the production of the podcast. As you know, that's not that's not free. And no. You can see the gradual increase in, in the quality of our podcast based on the fact that we're starting to put some of the money from the Facebook group into it. Yeah, you did a little Insta story the other day or a post of your gear and I could see, oh, you're upgrading. And it's, it's an arms race. Well, it is. And I'm a civilian. I've not been in the forces. But, you know, from what I can understand, of course, it, you know, a big part it comes down to the gear. You want superior tech. You want superior equipment, superior firepower. And same principle with podcasting. You need the superior microphones and the superior mixing software. It all makes a difference. Yeah. The thing letting you and me down right now is the quality of Skype. Exactly. When you're next on the show, Bram, it will be face-to-face. So Yeah, that'll be awesome. I'm interested in discussing some of the topics you'll be getting all these DMs about and cries for help. Obviously, a lot of them are going to be military-focused. I imagine one of the things you're contacted the most about is, of course, leadership. As we talked about, you went from sergeant to captain, so you've had two different very different leadership roles there as one thing. You were, in fact, awarded the Distinguished Service Medal for Leadership in Combat. So I want to ask for, I mean, I want to talk about leadership as a general concept, but do you think you already had leadership skills going into the military? I mean, how much can one be born with versus how much does it grow from experience? Yeah, great question. And definitely something we should talk about face-to-face, the quality 
of the audio is you know can keep people interested let's do the entree size answer then yeah okay so yeah you can be born with genetics with the right genetic profile to enhance your leadership ability and it will only go so far to the point where you need to see what good looks like and i'm a firm believer that you need to know what it's like to be led to be a leader which probably made me all the more without having gone through the brilliant establishment that is ad for an rmc probably made me all the more effective was the fact that I had been led by some very good leaders. Vince Cray comes to mind, my my platoon commander in Somalia. And I was able to get some really good, I think those early formative years in the first battalion as well, and see some of those those officers, a couple of which I can't talk about now because I think they're still in so command. Certainly the officers in Bravo Company in Somalia sort of set me up for success in the future with my leadership style, especially as an officer. I have a good story that I have latched onto about Hans Fleer, who you might may or may not have heard of. Hans Fleer was the honorary colonel for 4 hour commando, and he was the senior instructor on my selection course, again, the first selection course for, for the modern-day commandos. And he got us to the top of a, a hill on a 15-kilometre march, and he, he walked over. It was really early in the morning. The mist is rising up. It was out around Lithgow somewhere. He got our our platoon commander up and he walked him out to the vehicle and I won't use his name because he he didn't last that day. And he said to him, you know, Lieutenant such and such, tell me the name of your platoon sergeant. He said, oh, sergeant. And then he said, okay, well, what's his first name? And he goes, well, I can't tell you that. And then he said, well, tell me any of the names of any of the, of any of your men. And he he referred to us as corporal this and private that. And uh, at some stage he said, look, if you can't tell me the names of your guys and you can get in the vehicle. And so he, he got in the vehicle and he was taken away. And then we spent the next 20 minutes walking around from group to group, asking each other the first names. And we'd been together for two years at that point, didn't know who each other were. Wow. The thing that that showed me was understand the people that uh, work for you and understand them more than just at face value. You need to understand them intricately. And if that means understanding their family lives and so be it. But You can't lead people who you don't understand their motivations. You can't get people to do what you want them to do because they want to do it unless you can actually understand that person, what motivates them. And knowing a person's first name is probably a good start. I'd say so. I won't dive into the topic of resilience because I think that's going to be drawn a lot from your actual experience in the military. So I want to save that for this future episode we keep teasing. But I imagine you get asked a lot about training to be tougher, training to be resilient. And I'm going to preempt you and guess that you could be born with a certain disposition to resilience, but it also comes down to reinforcement and training. Oh, 100%. You know, that's 100% right. And I also you know, through the Warrior U program, we take people so far. But for those people that, that are looking for exactly what, you know, to understand themselves at that level, I always push them towards Reese Dowden and, and his platform. Operator Edge. Yeah, I think that's one of the one of the best foundation, you know, frameworks out there for being able to test yourself and make yourself tougher. And it'll it'll again, it'll only take you so far before you have to you have to be able to put yourself in those settings, you know, to actually immerse yourself in, a, in in those hard, arduous tasks. Well, I suppose that's why you call it human optimization. You're not growing something or creating something from scratch. You're taking what is already there and refining it to the best you can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm a firm believer that all you need to do is slow, consistent changes day in, day out. You know, we don't need these huge amounts of motivation to be better than what you were yesterday. You know, you just need little incremental changes. You need to take a a list down the night before the things that you want to nail the next day and then just go and do it. So we've mentioned both Warrior U program and the podcast. I want to quickly clarify that the podcast, it was something that was an exclusive perk or benefit to joining the program, but you have recently opened it up to the public. (laughs) What prompted that decision? Oh, hilarious. Mate, the reason we didn't launch it straight away was because life of the line came out and i sort of i'm that sort of guy who looks at something and when someone's doing something i don't i knew that you and i weren't competing but at the same time i I didn't want to muddy the water at all and so for a long time there i debated on whether or not i was doing the right thing by not having it free because as you know you know a podcast is a way to reach a wider audience and then to take them back to something so for me it was well i'm missing out here on letting people know about my books i'm missing out here on letting people know about the warrior you website because i'm not able to get on this medium and then a good friend of mine and a mentor an entrepreneur mentor who said to me look it's a different website 
you're not after the same sort of people. Sorry, the podcast. You're not after the same sort of people. And I think you should just, you know, put it out there and make it free. And, and I'm glad I did do that because it, it's another side of that creative outlet to myself that, that I sort of need anyway. I mean, I like it more than writing books, if I'm honest. I, I find that sitting down and talking with people and crafting it all and then the end, the end product being that podcast that is then, you know, sitting there ready to be launched on the Sunday night is very a very worthwhile pursuit and a really nice feeling. That's funny. I did not know that was going to be your answer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember when you messaged me ages ago asking if I'd heard of your podcast and I wasn't on the Warrior You program, so the answer was no. But um, I'm glad you launched it because, as you say, we haven't had any common guests yet, but that is going to change soon. I've got an interview with Reese Dowden coming out in a few weeks. But Oh, that'll be a cracker. Yeah. Like you say, it's it's not competitive because one is just getting stories and learning from the humanity of those experiences and in a way it's educational, in a way it's motivational. At least that's what I'm trying to make it and explore the humanity of conflict in the military. Whereas yours is about that human optimization. It's a very specific target. So I never viewed ours as competitive. If anything, I think they're complementary because we'll interview the same guest and get very different experiences out of them and someone will be just as inspired or motivated or learn from your chat with Reese Jewer as they might be from my chat with Mark Donaldson VC. So I'm glad you brought it out to the public because I've learned some interesting stuff from listening to it and I encourage all my listeners who haven't heard your podcast yet to go give it a crack. Yeah, and I, I was sitting in the I used to do a big transit with a friend of mine, a U.S. Special Forces major, Casey Finnegan, who was one of my first guests. And we were sitting in the car a lot and we were saying, we should do a podcast. We listened to Barbell Shrugged back in those days, 2013, 14. And we're like, we should do a podcast just from the car, you know, like, because some of the conversations we were having were amazing. So it felt really fitting to have him as my first guest, you know, one of my best friends and someone who, in, who inspired me to chase after it. I do feel like I'm probably going to have to, if I don't get enough, sort of a Patreon sort of support to be able to do the productions and to, and to get the right guests, then I'm, pr I'm probably going to have to call it a day at the end of this year. Um, there'll, be a, there'll be a decision point for sure. Mm. Well, listeners, you heard, go support Bram Connolly and the Warrior You podcast to keep it going because mm. I want to keep listening to him talking to a microphone. Yeah, it just amazes me. Amazes me that these, these American podcasts have such great, strong listenerships where they – you know, they pledge like a dollar a month or two dollars a month. In some cases, fifty, a hundred dollars a month. Some of these people, you know, and some of those podcasts are making, you know, money where they they can employ researchers and editors, and some of them they're able to buy bloody recording studios. But Australia's not there. We're just not there, and it's a shame because there's so many really bright, talented people out there who would who would provide great content if we were just a little bit more, I don't know, receptive to the idea. And Australia led the way for so long in the in the sort of news and you know radio industries absolutely yeah we've just and and the, it's a backwater now i've not ventured down the path of payment for the podcast for a variety of reasons i won't go into but i do appreciate the costs involved yeah i understand why why you haven't and i think you know you're, you're creating something that that hopefully someone else will find very intriguing later on so we'll see but as we've also covered today, Bram, you don't just speak into a microphone. You're also a published author, Australia's own Chris Ryan or Andy McNabb. Oh, tell me about that. Tell me more about the fighting season and off reservation. We know that you are 100% the main character, but what else? Oh, yeah, right. You've probably heard me say it before. Matt Ricks is everything that I ever wanted to be. He's all the best parts of all the good officers I've ever worked for. But the fighting season, I, I wrote that after meeting with Alan and Unwin the publishers there, and we, we discussed the fact that there was a little bit of a gap in the market. And I found it a really cathartic process, actually, to write down, you know, all that stuff about Afghanistan, the sights, the smells, you know, the taste, the sounds, and to then try and it's – it's using that narrative is the best way I know of taking someone into combat without actually taking them there. It's trying to build the picture in their mind's eye. So that's what I did with Fighting Season. And then Off Reservation, the sequel, you know, was me trying to create – a Hollywood blockbuster type movie out of an Australian character. 
And, you know, I'll probably die in 20, 30, 40 years' time and no one will have heard of me and then suddenly the books will become super famous and there'll be a whole heap of movies around them and, and you know, some – and Alan and Unwin will make a lot of money out of it, uh, which seems to seems to happen. I mean, Robert Ludlum, for instance, you know, the, the whole Bourne, you know, identities, he didn't even realise that he was going to be that huge star. Stig Larson. Yeah, absolutely. But I did have a great idea that maybe Matt Ricks would be picked up by – MI6 and because James Bond was sick and so because he was on exchange he'd have to go and do one of his missions for him that might be the next book so we could then have Daniel Craig team up with Chris Hemsworth and oh can you imagine it (laughs) that'd be a good money maker that would fund warrior you podcast for a decade yeah I have ideas on who I'd like to play Matt Ricks and I don't know I think I honestly think the guy for the job is Daniel McPherson I think he's probably he's yeah, he's good looking. He's not six foot three. He's got he's got his own flaws and the like, but he works really hard. And you know, and he's someone who the Australian public would believe that could be he'd made it to special forces. But you've still got to keep on your A game when you get there. You know, I think Daniel McPherson would be perfect. I just need Daniel McPherson to believe that Daniel McPherson would be perfect, and then to reach out to me and buy the rights. And you know how it all works, Alex. <laughs> I do well. I'm sure you'll be able to be reached in your DMs, and you'll respond to that one. Do you have any other books coming up? Uh, you know what? I'm going to say yes. I'm in two minds of whether or not to tell you what. Well, I'll keep it between you, me, and all my subscribers. All right. So I'm writing a third book. I'm nearly finished it. It'll be given to the publishers in a couple of weeks. The The holding title for it is The Risk of Being Average. There you go. You've heard it here first. And it's basically my career. And each chapter is a learning element of that career. And the whole idea of the risk of being average is that average people can do amazing things as long as you understand that you're probably, you know, a little bit average and you need to work harder. You need more consistency. You need to apply yourself more. And in order to achieve those really amazing things, you know, you have to understand that, you know, all these amazing people that you see, they're a result. They're either genetically gifted or they're a result of a lot of hard work. And a lot of them are just average people that work really hard. So there is a risk to being average, and the risk is that you can achieve some amazing stuff. So each, each one of the chapters is a little bit of a journey, and I, I try and give a bottom line up front to what the chapter's about, and then people can crack on and read it if they want. And a lot of them are stories where I've maybe stuffed things up in my military career. A couple of them are success stories, but uh, most of them aren't. Well, good luck to you on that. Let's do all the plugs. Where can people listen to the Warrior U podcast? On iTunes or Podbean. And the Warrior U website is www.warrioru.com.au. That's right. And where can people find your books? I have my own author's webpage, which is just www.bramconnolly.com. They were available in Dimmix and at the airport, but they only hold you as long as you're as long as you're either a big name or, or when you know, you're either a massive name or you're... It's a short shelf life. It's a cutthroat industry. Yeah. As someone who works in it? Yeah, it is. It is. It very much is. Yeah. It's good, though. It's good. I'm sure if they Google your name at either of those titles online, they'll be able to find it somewhere. Oh, yeah. Amazon sells it as well. Or they can just reach out to me direct and I can point them in the right direction on Instagram. Speaking of Instagram, what's your handle? Uh, it's just Bram Connolly. Kept it all really easy. Is it Bram.Connolly? Yeah, you're right. Well picked up. (laughs) I'm the only one. Do you have any final words of wisdom or motivation for people listening to this podcast today, Bram? You know what? I do, actually. I guess since I left the military, I sort of, I, I started to wonder what was the secret for people to be successful. And, you know, I was reading all these self help books and Tim Ferriss and Joe Rogan and Lewis Howes. And as much as I love all those guys, they just, they weren't really, I wasn't able to find that, that one thing. And then one day I was looking through all my friends on Instagram who are ex-Special Forces guys and they're all the people who've made it all seem to be on Instagram, obviously. And I so, it suddenly dawned on me that the one thing that they, that they never asked for or the one thing they all had in, you know, they all had as the same driving aspect to them, they all had this one thing in common, was that none of them asked anyone for permission. And I think quite often what we do is we wait for the universe to give us a sign or we wait for someone we work with to give us a, you know, the okay to do something or our family to say, yeah, it's all right, you should do that, that's a good idea, rather than just, you know, just go at it, just go and do whatever it is you want to do. And so my one piece of advice to anyone, mostly to my children, I guess, but to anyone listening is, you know, don't ask permission to do something. If you want to do it, do it. And then if it doesn't work out for you, then you, know, you either suffer the consequences or 
you know, beg forgiveness. That's very much my philosophy. Don't wait around, just get on with it. Yeah, mate. Well, Bram, thanks for the chat today. I do hope listeners go and check out your show, your books, the Warrior You program, if they're interested in a military career. And I look forward to having you back on the show. When you say that, I realize just how much stuff I've got going on. It's insane. You're a busy bloke. Thanks for your time today. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Be sure to check out Bram Connolly's Instagram page, his books, the Warrior U program, and the Warrior U podcast, all as discussed in the chat. Make sure you check out this podcast online too. We're on Instagram and Facebook at Life on the Line Podcast and on Twitter at LOTL Pod. And our website is www.lifeonthelinepodcast.com. Life on the Line is brought to you by Thistle Productions, artwork by Big Cat Design, music by Dan Van Workhoven. Thanks for listening, and lest we forget, 